Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. My name is Dr. Paul. I'm here, as always, with Dr. Stavros. Guys. Today, we're going to answer some of your most urgent med school-related questions. USMLE prep clinicals, how to study residency applications. Anything that you're asking us, we are going to answer for you today. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out, let us know, and we will answer it in an upcoming video. Before we dive in, do us a huge favor. If you've been watching our videos and you're finding them to be helpful, hit that like button, subscribe, set up notifications, and we'll send you an alert every time we release a brand new video. All right, Doc, let's dive in. This is from Visual Use 9437. Need help to build a CV for USMLE. Hey, I am not in the USIMG, just got my step one score. And after seeing that I have decided to work a lot on my CV, so it would be very helpful if someone suggests me the various ways I can work on my CV. How can we approach for publications? Is there anyone who want to work in collaboration? Go for it, Doc. What do you want? Jump A -M -A -A -M -C org has, <laughs> There's your answer. Data, has data of what the <laughs> average person who matched into every specialty has accomplished. Publications, research experience, posters, yeah. presentations, um, uh, volunteer work, yeah. everything. Go and find out what the average student is accomplishing. And then if you are below average with step one, be above average with CK, be above average with volunteer experience, be above average with publications and research. Very simple. I will put a link to that in this video, aamc.org. It's a specific subsection of the website. The last reported data was 2018, but it tells you the average med student had this many of all these categories, had this score for step one, CK. Also, you can see what people in the 10th percentile, 25th percentile, 50th, 75th, and 90th percentile had on their for grades, had for research, volunteer, all this stuff. Take the data, plug years in. Make sure you're above average in the other areas so you can compensate for a weak step one. That's all you got to do. Simple. Yeah, because I mean, this individual has a step one score. And then, you know, obviously you have to understand that when you're applying for residency in the future, they're, you're applying for a job. So yep. you need all your steps. You need everything else that's going to build a wonderful application. So we do in our students a residence roadmap. We start from the beginning between social media, your exams, your resume, your personal statement. There's so many different components that, you know, publications, okay, great. But how about focus on everything else? Your step one score, step two CK score. Those are the, the, the beginning ones. And then everything else is the icing on the cake to put it all together to make yourself the, the ideal and perfect candidate that you need to be to get the spot that you want instead of just settling for whatever, if, in a, if, if you have an option to get one. So right. best of luck. So um, yeah, I'm actually going to create a short link and I'll put it in this video right now. So you guys can check out the short link we created, head over there, find all these details and then just execute. Simple. That's, that's what you got to do. All right. All right. We have one more question. Let me pull it up. The question right. is, or the statement is ran out of study time. Oh. Going in, going into the final week and not sure if I'll be able to hit biochem super hard, maybe like one day at most. I already don't like the, the direction this is taking. Oops. Am I screwed? <laughs> Probably. How should I approach this? I have antimicrobials, parasites left for sketchy and haven't looked at immunology or biochem yet. So you should, I'm gonna you say should not be taking your exam. Exactly. I mean, I'm going to be like, first of all, how'd you run out of time? How many months or weeks or days did you study for the step one? Why did you run out of time for biochem? Biochem is one of the biggest, if not, I mean, not the most important because it's path, path of fist, fist form. But either you didn't like biochem, which happens a lot, and students are like, oh, I'll do it later. Because how do you avoid biochem? How do you leave one day to learn everything, all the cycles? Well, not learn, but refresh and retain. So, I mean, I, you know, I see this. We see this a lot. Um, poor planning, poor schedule. For everything because in order for you to get to your time to take an exam like step one or step two ck the last two weeks shouldn't be panic mode it should be i'm good to go i'm reviewing i'm in space repetition i'm um, doing questions i'm fine-tuning my weak points and i'm ready to go take the exam instead of saying what do i do now because i don't know what to do unfortunately you took a lot of time for yourself and i don't know who this person is but that's what i would say superficially from outside looking in I don't know how long you took, how many hours, how many days, how many, anything. But if you ran out of time on a, on a biochem, man, you just put it to the side. That's why I, that's why I would say you just didn't want to study it. So let's just be real conservative sure. and say 10% of your questions come from biochem. Sure. Let's say 
5% of your questions come from immuno, okay. antimicrobials, and parasites as a whole. 15%. If you haven't even looked at this stuff, you can essentially say that that 15%, you're probably going to maybe get 25%, right? Just, just if, by guessing. Sure. If that, if that. If. Because if a you're good, guessing. A good day. If you're straight up guessing on immuno, uh, parasites, antimicrobials, these aren't things you can reason if you just don't know this stuff. That's 15% of your exam. That means Out the door. You, need to, you need to crush the other 85%, absolutely dominate. I'm going to guess that if you didn't organize your studies in a way where you didn't even tackle two topics and then a good chunk of micro here, don't forget, you didn't just not do biochem. You also didn't do a lot of micro. You didn't do right. immuno. I'm going to guess that you're probably not in a position where you're going to get 90 to 95% of the other 85%. Let's say you're in a position to get 60% of that other 85%. All of a sudden, you're flirting with only getting half the questions right. This is not an ideal scenario. And you know, I actually looked at some of the answers here. Someone says, don't panic, try biochem from first aid. You cannot master an entire topic for the step one, identify your weaknesses, apply your knowledge to questions, and get to a point where you can get 80 to 90% of questions correct by reading first aid. So if you are going into your final day of prep, First of all, this should be a day where you're actually relaxing because you've done all the heavy lifting. Like you said, this, if, if, if you were my student and you came to me and said this, I would say, move your exam. But it cost me $1,200, $1,500. Move your exam. Because if you go and you fail your exam, you have a blemish on your record forever. I would rather you spend the extra money, sure. set up a proper study schedule, go in your exam and crush it. And then not have to apply to three times as more programs because your step one score was a fail. And I wouldn't want to put you in a scenario where you need to score 265 on CK to make up for your terrible step yeah. one score. And maybe you fail the second time. Who knows? It's worth an investment to avoid long-term pain. Students don't want to spend 2000 on a prep course. They go and they fail the CS. They come and work with us. They pass. But they, now they've got that blemish. Yeah. Students are smart. Okay. They invest $2,000, come and prep with CS for us, or spend $100 on our uh, survival guides, get ready, pass on the first time. Down the road, they avoid tons of headaches. So if you're in a scenario where you're going to fail because you haven't prepared properly, spend the money, move your exam, and then find someone who can help you prepare properly. This is a really, for me, this is a really upsetting thing to read because you shouldn't be going into your final day with so much, first of all, so much, but second of all, really difficult things to guess your way through uh, questions. Like, I mean, if it was physio and you said, I didn't study physio, at least physio is conceptual. If something's not working here, you can figure out what's not working there. With, with biochem, you either know the enzyme or you don't. You either know the enzyme associated with the pathology or you don't. Immuno, you either know the, the, the way that it works or you don't. You can't, and my antimicrobials, good, luck trying to guess your way through antimicrobials. You just can't. I know because in med school for me, I had my first uh, farm test in antimicrobials and it's hard, man. It was brutal. It was so hard for me because oh, you, you have to memorize that stuff. Yeah. This is a really bad situation. Delay, delay. That's step one. Number two, find mentors to help you do it right the next time around. And this is exactly why we do what we do, because if you 100%. are on our team and are, you know, and you're by our side, side by side, we'll never let this happen because there's no way I could sleep or you sleep at night knowing that yeah. our students would ever go through this because they don't, because they reach out to us. We have our sessions. We figure out, okay, have you done this? Why haven't you done this? To a point where when they get down the last couple of weeks of their ex before exam day, they're just like what we said earlier, ready. They're just taking a couple of NVMEs, fine tuning their weaknesses, getting good sleep, good rest, putting themselves on a nice sleep schedule, eating healthy. And next thing you know, they crush it. And that's the whole point. I mean, so best of luck. Uh, Snoo Hedgehog 4179. But yeah, and I wouldn't take the test personally. I wouldn't. I, we would tell our students, don't take it. You wouldn't be our student. You know, so <laughs> basically. Yeah. And you know, one last thing I want to point out, and you know, even just three or four years ago, and then moving back into like the 2010s, 20 early teens, everyone yeah. went to the forums for advice, right? Sure. And the forums were riddled with really bad advice. Now, I'm looking at some of the answers here. Number one, like I said, someone said, just read first aid. Someone says, go through this specific Anki deck. Someone said, binge board and beyond for everything except micro. Okay, so your advice is don't do micro. 
sound advice. Another one says, definitely look into immuno. My form was heavy on immuno and hard, even though I had read it a couple of times. So really your advice to the student who hasn't done immuno is look into immuno. But another point that I wanna pull from this is what if you, you have a lot of micro, a lot of biochem and a lot of immuno, and it's lighter in things like um, anatomy. It's a little bit lighter on, on histo and on embryo. Yeah. All of a sudden that 15% that was conservative now is 20%. Yeah. You're just gonna do even worse. Yeah. So first of all, my point here is, guys, if you don't know how to properly prepare for an exam, please stop giving people advice. Just point them in our direction because you're just doing people a disservice. Number yeah. two, if you're in a scenario where you're not sure um, how to do something, please reach out to us. We have over 170 videos on YouTube alone. We have basically covered everything you need to know to pass step one, CK, CS. If you want actual help, please reach out to us because you, risking really your future, risking your future by doing really silly things like not studying you know, three full topics for your exam, it's you tough. need sound advice. This is just, I'm, I'm actually blown away and I'm almost, I don't even know how to respond to this because this is really, this is just a bad situation. And if you are someone who's finding yourself in this situation, for the love of God, please reach out to me directly on Instagram at real Dr. Paul or reach out to Dr. Stavros if you like him better <laughs> at real Dr. Stavros. But please reach out to us because yeah. I don't want you to be someone who would be a great doctor. You've just been misguided. I want you to have the tools at your disposal to actually succeed. Please reach out to us. I mean, I usually never plea for people to please reach out to us, but please, this if case, this yeah. sounds like you, please reach out to us because this is this is not good. And, and the reason why you touched this up earlier is if let's say an individual goes through this route and barely passes or fails and then passes, then you have to understand you made your life a lot more challenging because now you can't delete that score. You can't take it again if you pass or barely pass. You can't take and you can't delete the failure. So now you have to go work twice, three times, four times, five times as hard, if not more, to score a higher CK to hopefully compensate for that failure where in a lot of, a lot of programs are going to look at you because you through the filter system. So you see, yeah. it's like if you work hard now and you've heard this from us and your family and your parents growing up, you know, work, 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 put you put the sacrifice now. It's the same thing. You don't want to leave it to the end. This is not just a regular exam in college. This is for your future to set yourself up for success instead of just settling. And you've seen us talk about all the time. So it's like, well, I'll just settle for this specialty. This is your future in medicine. It's not just going to a job to finish the job to, to change change positions. This is what you've worked hard for, supposedly, to get to, to then settle my rest of my life, 40 plus years in a specialty that I don't I never desired because I didn't work hard earlier. So it's a domino effect. Unfortunately, that's yeah, that's is. the magic pill. Domino effect. So it's a formula. Just got to work hard, guys. You got to you got to sacrifice, but work effectively and efficiently, and have people like us to guide you accordingly, or else you're on your own. And best of luck if you can do it on your own. By all means, it's doable. A lot a lot of discipline every day. It's not easy. All right. Well, that was a final emotional uh, answer. That one was uh, tough to read, but hopefully that provides someone with some <laughs> insight and some advice. It means uh, well. Reach out to us. Um, hopefully that was helpful. If you guys found this to be helpful, if there's something specific that stood out to you, leave us a comment in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. Or if you have a question, please feel free to let us know below. Right. If you found this to be helpful, do us a huge favor. It really helps out with the algorithm. Hit that like button below. The more people who like this, the more students we can reach this message and, and help them make sure that they are going down the right path to success in their careers. And if you like this video, subscribe, set up notifications. We'll let you know every time we release a brand new video. Thank you all for spending some time with us today. Dr. Stavros, as always, it was a pleasure. Thank you uh -huh. for your time. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye guys. Hey there, thanks for watching. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. We've got a couple more great videos. We got one up here, we got one up there. See you guys on the next video.